bless you, God bless you on this Miracle Monday. So glad that we are back together to share and encourage uh, each other in the word of the Lord. I am thankful for all the goodness and mercy of Jesus, all of his favor and all of his grace that he's got on your life, he's got on my life, and as well as our family and our friends. Man, I just want to continue on this Miracle Monday talking about the miraculous work and the power of God when it comes to us yielding to his his desires and and really trying to seek him with everything that we have in us amen and uh you know we're believing god for breakthroughs in 2022 and we're also believing god that as we worship our way through this year that god's going to just open up doors and continue to have his hand of favor on our life to really uh begin to manifest the dreams and uh and uh, our greatest dreams and our greatest uh desires in our life for us and our for our family and uh you know worship you know the bible talks about us worshiping in spirit and in truth that the true worshipers worship jesus in spirit and in truth and when we're talking to to spiritual people the people that uh, have grown up in the Bible, in the in the Word of God, and reading the Bible and knowing the principles and the tenets of faith. It's easy to understand what that Scripture is talking about. But as a non-believer, talking about spiritual things to people that don't have that type of knowledge and uh, relationship and have experienced the things that we have uh, growing up in church or growing in faith. It's foreign to them. So what does that mean growing up in spirit and in truth? And and it's 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 a it's a work that God does in people's life. And we cannot forget the babes in Christ and those that don't know the Lord, uh, because we have a a, a more uh, more knowledge as it relates to the things of God and the principles of God and the the uh, tenets of faith. So I'm going to try to break it down just a little bit um, to give an example of, of what this spirit and truth looks like um, through the, the word of the Lord. You know, we're going to start in uh, Luke chapter 16, uh, starting at verse number 11, all the way to verse number uh, 19, where uh, Jesus cleanses the lepers, uh, the lepers. And, uh, you know, uh, worship brings healing and healing is a promise of God. You know, the Bible says by, by his stripes and with his stripes, we are healed. We were healed, but sometimes healing doesn't come instantaneously. Amen. That's why the Bible talks about it's a process and we go from faith to uh, from, from glory to glory and faith to faith. You know, it's, it's just like. Uh, getting a degree. It doesn't happen overnight. Some things that you have to uh, dedicate yourself to show yourself faithful in and God will give you the increase. You know, it's like taking a test. Sometimes, you know, you can't get the, 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 uh, the, uh, pass it the first time. Sometimes you have to take it again. And that, that's what strengthens your education as it relates to academics. In that same way, when when you're going through trials and tribulations in your life, sometimes those tests are designed for you to get exercised in your face so you can get stronger and stronger like a bodybuilder or an Olympic athlete. Amen. So the Bible goes, it, it starts off in a uh, in Luke chapter 11, I mean, chapter 16, starting at verse number 11, says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem, talking about Jesus, that he passed through the middle of Samaria and Galilee. Then he entered into a certain village. There he met 10 lepers who stood afar off. Okay. Verse number 13 says, And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when Jesus saw them, he said to them, he said to them, uh, go show yourself to the priests. 
And when they heard him say that, they went, and as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, verse number 15, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and in a vow, in a loud voice, he glorified and, and, and honored God. He fell down on his feet, at Jesus' feet, and he gave thanks and glory to the Lord. He was from Samaria. He was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, weren't there 10 of you lepers that were cleansed? But where are but where are the other nine? Where where are the other nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Amen. Now we're looking at the story of these 10 lepers in relationship to worship and healing because God will heal you in worship. And sometimes healing is physical. Sometimes it's mental. Sometimes it's relational. And when you're talking about healing relationships, sometimes you can be healed physically, but your relationship have not been healed and you have not united or been joined into a strong relationship with Jesus because of healing. And this is a, 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 a perfect picture of what happens when you fail to give God glory for the healing that takes place in your life. The Bible says that these lepers were outside of Galilee and outside of Samaria and lepers, they uh, were told by the chief priest and the law that they were diseased because of sin. So they were cast on the outskirts and outside of society. Some like me and you, we were cast out because of our attitude, alcoholism, something that wasn't normal puts us on the outside of society. Maybe it's our learning. Maybe it's the way we learn. Maybe it's the way we grow up. Maybe we don't have, maybe we're in foster care, you know, maybe we were adopted. Maybe we were, um, you know, maybe we have a physical disability, a mental disability. Maybe we have financial hardships, you know. Maybe we don't have both of our parents. But there's some things that happen in people's lives that push them to the outside of society. And and it seems like that that that, that these people, like you and I, are always trying to find our way, find ourselves find our uh, our footing uh, and 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 we've been ostracized in the in the as it relates to our life and our uh, 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 social groups you know in school um, maybe at work you know uh, it seems like sometimes we can be pushed off because of our beliefs sometimes because of our our, our, our moral uh, values uh, and and other different things you know it doesn't take much for a group of people to find some reason to put you off and put you out there you know where you seem like you're 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 all by yourself or you're just in a very small group of misfits you know like the island of misfits in the story of uh, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer you know, uh, it, it, it is it is easy for people that are not like you <laughs> to formulate an opinion about you and don't even know you, you know. And uh, it, we tend to hang around like-minded people, you know. We hang around people. These lepers were all hanging around each other because they all had the same ailment. So, you know, uh, it's important to 
for us also to look at this story to kind of uh, realize that it's not healthy to hang around people that are that that have your same issues and problem. It's not healthy for you to hang around people all the time that way. It does not broaden your horizon. It does not broaden your ability to be able to be all things to all people and to grow and to learn and to develop. It's hard to develop when everybody thinks like you and everybody has the same opinion like you, you know. It's it, now I'm not saying for you to go hang around mass murderers and rapists and and you know uh, child molesters and 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 uh, you know uh, con artists. <laughs> I'm just saying in a general sense that it's good to get around people that have different opinions uh, and different thoughts and um, different ideas, so that through your process of social interactions your life will change and grow get outside your city get outside your town get outside your state get outside of this uh this united states if you can because people are not people don't believe like you and they still can be a very <clears throat> they're still very good people that don't believe like you and don't just limit yourself. These 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 lepers were limited, not only because their disease, but also because of their their mentality. Amen. They had a a a, a mentality. At least nine of them had a had a mentality that that they you know uh, almost an entitlement after they when they saw Jesus and and. And they knew that he was healing people and, and they, he had the ability. To, they, they almost took it for granted that that because they were Jews, you know, it was their their uh, right to be healed. And, and so once they got healed, they did not consider even one moment to go back and be grateful for the power of God to heal these lepers, which was a death sentence. It was a death sentence. They send leopards out to a leper island where there was just nothing but lepers. You know, these leopards, they, they, they were so uh, feared because leprosy is contagious. They were, they, they, they were uh, worse than, they were treated worse than dogs. And, and yet when the healer came, they did not even give God the courtesy of giving God glory and, and praise for the miracle that they received. And, uh, well, I'm kind of sidebar and kind of winging it. And I'm not trying to chase any rabbits, but I just kind of follow in this flow. How many times have we been brought out of so many things that were deadly that were so life-threatening. Come on, somebody. So, uh, so uh, beyond our means to be able to get out of. And and God did it, and 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 we didn't even spend time to say thank you, Lord. To say, Lord, I I I can't believe you did this for me. And I know that I'm sinful. I know that I'm not living the way I should be living. And I just want to take the time to say thank you, Jesus. I just want to take the time to, 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 to acknowledge you and to say without you, I surely would have died. And I just give you praise and I glorify your name for what you did. Not in a way where the public is going to be impressed, but just one-on-one, -on -one, I want you to know that I acknowledge you and what you have done for me. It's a miracle. Without you doing this for me, I would have surely died. That is worship in its purest form, just praising God for who he is. Praise the Lord. 
And 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 these these Jews that were lepers refused to do it. And although God healed them, they still did not get the the wholeness that Jesus wanted to 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 give freely because of their refusal to get intimate with the Lord, to get honest with the Lord and to be truly grateful for what the Lord had done. But it, it says it says that when they saw them, now look, we're going to we kind of go back. When they saw Jesus, they said that they didn't wait for them him to come. They came, they raised their voice and shouted, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. See, sometimes we're so prideful, we refuse to give our voice to God. Now, we will yell and scream at football games. We will yell and scream in the gym getting our, our swole on. We will yell and scream, come on somebody, when we're having fun with our friends, slapping our our knees and, and, and cackling and laughing and throwing our head back and just getting, you know, just having a good time. But when it comes to the things of God and praising and worship God, we get silent. We say, oh, well, I don't praise like that. I don't worship like that. Hey, but when we was watching the football game or we was watching the U, uh, UFC or we was watching this boat, this, this fight, this MMA, I mean, this boxing match, we were both high-fiving and yelling and screaming at the TV like we were there going crazy over people beating the crap out of each other. Amen. So don't tell me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't tell me that that's not in your nature to raise your voice when you're excited. I mean, we get excited and we raise our voice. Come on, somebody. When that check hits the bank. Come on, somebody. The worship and the praise and the attitude and the behavior that God loves to see is that when we know that we are in pain, we know that we have been far away from God and that we lift up our voice in all sincerity and shout, Jesus, have mercy on me. Not worrying about what people are looking at. Not worried about what kind of a spectacle it might seem like in front of a crowd or in front of people. We cannot be ashamed, amen, of our sin. And we need to shout out to the highest mountaintop when we have fallen and we are hurt and we are, we are, we are, we are in dire straits. We need to holler out like these lepers. Jesus, have mercy on me. Master, have mercy on me. Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. They acknowledged Jesus. They knew he was the master of it all. And they called him by his name. They praised him for being a master. They cried out for mercy. And Jesus responded, now he responded, but they weren't immediately healed. Now let's look at this. There's people that are going through some health problems and I don't want you to be discouraged because some health problems can be healed immediately, amen? And some can be helped by diet. Some can be helped by a uh, healed. You can, you can be healed by diet and exercise from some health problems. Some health problems can be uh, helped by medication. Some health problems can be helped through counseling. Come on, somebody. But some health problems needs a process, steps, amen, 
Uh, and sometimes it involves chemotherapy. Sometimes it involves something a little bit more deeper. But the point being that all healing from God is not immediate. Amen. Although God wants to heal you more than you even want to be healed. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it takes a process. The Bible says that once Jesus heard them, he spoke to them and he said, go to show yourself to the priest. And so it was as they went, they were healed. They were cleansed. And sometimes God takes you through steps. Amen. Um, sometimes, uh, you can be delivered right away. And sometimes the deliverance and the healing and the cleansing is a process. Um, I remember uh, me being an alcoholic for all those years. From 1980, let's say 83, I think. 82 or 80, yeah, probably 83, 1983 to 2003. I started drinking in 1983 and I started drinking Tangeray straight out the bottle. I would pull me a mason jar and drink before I went to school. I did that my whole school year, my, my whole school, uh, the years I was in school, uh, junior high and high school, and uh, then graduated to drinking Tangeray, uh, drinking uh, from Tangeray to drinking ENJ. I was drinking Seagram's Gin, Naughty Head. I was drinking. Uh, now, if you if you have if you have a problem with alcohol, you might want to turn this off because I'm talking about giving glory to God. Now, if you can't handle me talking about what God delivered me from, you can turn it off and then come back in like three minutes. But I gotta give God glory because I was addicted. I drink uh, Tangeray and I would drink uh, E and J. I would drink. Uh, the uh uh oh man not not Hennessy but uh uh Crown Royal Crown Royal boy I would drink Crown I I could drink a a, a half a gallon of Crown in two days and uh, that's that's not including going to the club and drinking. Uh, two two pitchers of uh, Texas tea and about a six pack twelve pack case of beer along with that. You know, I uh, when I was in Germany, I would drink a case of beer, uh, two steins of uh, Heffy Weizen, some Hellas Weizen. If y'all not if y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I drink a, a half a liter of, of Naughty Head, you know, on, on Friday and Saturday. And uh, I did that for two and a half years. And then when I got back to Stateside, that's when I started drinking that Crown, man. Uh, I drink Crown, a half a, you know, a half of a half a G on Friday, about a 12 pack. And then go to the, go to the bar and drink two of those, uh, Two of those um, Texas teas, man, and just be just black out, just doing crazy stuff. And you know, it was it was uh, got to the point where I was just in a place where I knew I needed to stop drinking, and I just could not stop drinking. It was depressing most of all it was scary i was scared of what i could have did and could do when i was drinking <clears throat> and it had just it had continually got worse and worse and i was sick i was diseased alcoholic i was a diseased alcoholic and i was sick and i was crazy I was mean, I was nasty, and uh, it got to the point where I was just scared, couldn't stop, wanted to stop, couldn't stop, and uh, 
God started speaking to me in 2003 that he was going to heal me. And when I really got it, really believed it, I started getting, there was something inside of me just made me excited. And I started thinking, man, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go to church and, and I'm going to get healed. And uh, the Lord just told me like I could just, I, I didn't hear him audibly, but I like in my heart and in my mind, I knew something good was going to happen. And I, I went to church just expecting God to do something. And I don't even remember what the, what the service was about. I just couldn't wait for it to get done so I could ask to be baptized. It was just something that just popped up in my heart and in my mind. Get baptized, get baptized. And uh, <clears throat> after the service, I, 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 I uh, was begging, begging people, hey, hey, hey. I want to get baptized. I want to get baptized. Nobody was paying me any attention. And I cried out, hey, I want to get baptized. And one of the uh, leaders, him and his wife, finally heard me after about 15, 20 minutes. And I said, oh, you do? Man, and I was like, yeah, I couldn't wait to get in the water, man. I got in the water and I just remember them baptizing me. And I just remember going down, like still, you know, still with the same mentality that I always had, struggling, you know what I mean, uh, with this addiction, just just uh, feeling hopeless, depressed, feeling sad, you know, uh, feeling scared and just, you know, feeling so weighed down. But it just seemed like when I broke out of that water, when my head and my body came out of that water it just seemed in that instant that the taste of alcohol the desires of being drunk and and all of the things that came with alcoholism and drinking just immediately was removed out of my soul and out of my mind and out of my heart and I just felt different. I felt new. I felt just like I had unlimited potential. And that's what happens. Sometimes God will immediately heal you. And it's the most beautiful thing in the world. And I testify to you that they're still instantaneously healing. But God decides, not us what he wants to do immediately and what he wants to take you through the steps of walking and cleansing you from. Because although I was healed from alcoholism, I still, that was June 29th, 2003, did that happen. I was still smoking cigarettes. And uh, uh, I was smoking like a half a pack. I've always smoked about a half a pack a day, you know, at that time. And I started smoking about the same time. I started drinking about 83 or whatever. And um, I was still smoking after that day, you know. And uh, that was in June, July, August. Like in September, I really started feeling a conviction every time I smoked, you know. I was at the job. And there was a believer there. He was an older guy. Uh, he went to uh, John Hagee's church, Cornerstone. And this dude was a religious dude. I mean, he was very ceremonial, very, you know, uh, you know. And the, and God bless the, those people that, that are religious, you know. Uh, it's needed in the body of Christ. Uh, but he, he wasn't a very loving, he didn't really embrace my south my uh born again experience he wasn't really encouraging in the way that uh he was loving and compassionate and those type of things he was really you know really hardcore you know really like he he was really law he really he really uh focused on the law of god you know thou shalt not steal thou shalt not covet you know the ten commandments and just very very uh ceremonial we 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 yeah we don't want to break the commandments of god you know and things like that but yeah he used to look at me with disgust because i was testifying about how god delivered me from you know from alcoholism i was just happy to be be 
born again. And he would look at me out there in the smoker's uh, circle, and he would look at me and scowl, you know. You know. And finally, one day, it was in uh, October, you know, I was already feeling con convicted. It was in October sometime. I can't remember the, 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 the uh, date. I have it on a calendar. But, uh, yeah, he came up to me and said, you're supposed to be saved. I said, yes, sir. He said, God delivered you. I heard, I heard the testimony. Everybody heard my testimony at work. I heard God delivered you from, from alcohol. I said, yes, yes, man. God is so good. And, you know, was just testifying about the goodness of the Lord. He said, yeah. He stopped me middle, middle of my testimony. He said, yeah, you, you talk about God delivering you. You're still smoking. God delivered you from drinking. He don't he can't deliver you from smoking. And I, I kind of like caught my breath, like, how dare you? You know, like, and I just like smiled, sucked it up. I said, yeah, you're right. You're right, man. You know, he did. He did. Now this is my, this is my testimony. I, you know, if you, if God hasn't convicted you about stopping drinking, stopping smoking, I'm not, I'm not telling you, telling you the, my testimony as it relates to these, these steps of worship, because sometimes God heals you immediately. And sometimes it's a process. So he healed me immediately on the, on the, uh, on the alcoholism and drinking, but smoking, it was a process. And, uh, from that day forward, I got angry when he said that to me. I got mad. I said, oh, you think you got more faith than me? Yeah, God delivered me from drinking. And by God, I believe in the name of Jesus that God's going to deliver me from smoking. So from that day, I walked into the closet where I kept my calendar and I put a mark on there and I put quit smoking. And every day, Every day I had an inkling or a hankering or some type of urge to smoke. I would go back to that calendar and said, you delivered me this day from smoking. I know you'll deliver me today. And I marked that thing off. And uh, I, I prayed. I cried out to God. I was like, Lord, have mercy. I remember being in the closet just crying out to God, you know, with tears. God. I know you can help me. Please put something else in my hand because that motion, that motion, I needed something else in my hand. And you know what God put in my hand? He said, I'm going to put something in your hand. He put those little starlight, those starlight um, peppermint, the little round ones, and this Bible. He put this in my hand and I would devour this word. I would spend two, three hours at work, you know, every chance I got in the word or have the word just going on in my, um, in my earphones, just healing scriptures, just, just worship, worship. And, and that lasted for, mm, I think I have like October, November, December, January. So I have one calendar from October to December filled with marks <laughs> going through the process. And then I have all the way through a year. So 15 months, 15 months where I didn't have to mark it. Those, those urges came, but I didn't have to mark it. They weren't that, that overwhelming like it was for those 15 months I was going through every day. When I'd get those urges, when I'd get those pulls that I was going to have to smoke, you know, that I got that urge that I needed to smoke. It took me 15 months to walk out of that, you know. And it just seemed like every day I got stronger. Every day that addiction got weaker. Every day the grasp that the enemy had on me got, got, got lighter and lighter to one day I didn't need to mark it. One day I didn't need to, to uh, 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 strike that uh, calendar and say that this is this is this is the day that God gave me yesterday and he's going to give me today that I'm not going to put that cigarette in my mouth and that was uh October two, two, uh 2003 so you know we must be faithful in the process amen 
we we need to look at the examples that we see in the word of God and let it be our map and our blueprint to worship our way through these trials and through these tribulations, not forgetting the master who is healing you. The Bible says that, that Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest because he knew that lepers were condemned by the priest. Amen. He wanted to show them that there's still a healer that heals all sickness and diseases and show them to the, the, the priest that were just so religious, they didn't see anything outside the law. Amen. Outside of the law. They didn't see the love and the mercy that Jesus so so uh, willingly showed to the people that he came in contact. So he wanted to give the priests and the Sadducees and the people in the leadership that were responsible for 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 distributing and and observing and and judging the the the, the word of God on earth. Give them an opportunity to come in closer. Closer than the law and the prophets could bring them to have a personal experience with the master that has mercy and that heals King Jesus, our healer. He said, go show yourself to the priest. Let them see because they not only distributed and judged the law and the prophets, they were also the physicians. Amen. And they couldn't heal them. They weren't even thinking about healing them lepers. They wanted them out of the 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 uh the the culture they wanted them out of the village they didn't want them uh around at all because they were they were uh defiled amen so he sent them back to show himself to the to the priest to give them an opportunity to go and seek the same healer that healed the lepers God is no respecter of persons. Amen. It doesn't matter whether you are, or, or you have uh, been in the church a lot or that you have not been in the church at all. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's available right now to heal you. And he's given us an opportunity every time, every day to come in a little closer. To make your relationship a little stronger. And that's what he afforded the chief priest the opportunity to. And the Bible said when he, he said that he told the lepers to, uh, after, after he told the lepers to do that, the lepers immediately obeyed. They obeyed the instruction. And as they obeyed the instruction, they were cleansed. It was a process. As they went the bible said they were healed so sometimes you have to walk it out i remember when the kids graduated from shekinah the last year that i was a chaplain over there that god gave me the word walk it out because there's things that you have to walk out through a process and i was talking to them about their life that through their life there's going to be times hard times that the devil's going to come against them and try to make them quit, make them throw up their hands, throw down their life, throw down their purpose, throw down their God's plan for them. And they 